I am Ben the Illustrator. Um, I work obviously as an illustrator. Originally I worked in animation, I studied animation at college and I worked in animation for a few years and I realised in doing I was part of a little studio and I realised while I did that that all I really cared about was how things looked and so I started doing illustration work because I wasn't a storyteller and I wasn't a great animator. We had amazing freelance animators and I sort of thought okay that's what I want to do. I started the survey in 2017 and I kind of I use social media a lot and I talk to a lot of illustrators and I enjoy that conversation but I kind of realised that even talking to lots of different illustrators all over the place there's still a bit of a bubble that we were in a bubble and there's other people in other illustration bubbles and I sort of I was quite interested in how the industry as a as a broad whole was doing so I thought well I'll, I'll do a bit of a survey and originally it was going to be like I'll do a few Twitter posts like polls on Twitter and then I thought, well, no, because I'm just talking to my bubble again. So I'll do like a survey on its own and then get people to come to it from all different angles. Um, but I think at that point, there was quite a few people questioning the industry, questioning what was going on and wanting to find out more. And so it kind of came at a really good point. This year, I did something different where I asked a selection of illustrators uh, if they work as a committee and to help me curate the questions because I had to make sure that I was, um, that we had the right set of questions for everyone sort of thing across the board. So I had children's book illustrators, I had mid-career illustrators, a few older illustrators and a few younger illustrators, different backgrounds. Obviously the industry has, does have some problems but looking at the answers you got back and obviously from your own experience, what do you and other illustrators love about this industry? There's an, an amazing community and it's very supportive and it's very friendly and it's very inclusive. Um, and so that's there and everyone loves that. One massive thing that I've seen help a lot of people is getting out and seeing people, but it's hard to do that. For some people, you know, they might feel like they're the only illustrator in their town. Um, but the more we have, you know, localised events, uh, there's loads of events, the, the cities are amazing, Manchester and London, especially, uh, you know, Birmingham's got a really good, great scene and everyone knows each other and there's social meetups and there's kind of design conferences and there's, there's all sorts of stuff going on. But for the people on the outskirts of the cities or in little towns or wherever they are, there's not always something. I know the public seem to be more aware of illustrators now than they were when I started the survey or 10, 20 years ago. And so people who aren't involved in illustration and have no reason to commission illustration professionally are kind of getting into getting behind people and they're kind of wanting their own pieces from from these illustrators and there's a lot of illustrators now will on their online stores they'll have art prints but they'll also offer custom prints so it might be a portrait there's a, there's a nice trend of uh, pet portraits and that kind of thing and it's like a more interesting gift i think as i noticed in the survey that 25 percent of those surveyed don't actually work with a contract and i'm wondering if that's because they were mainly doing private commissions where the need mm. for a contract isn't so important could i read the figures that way there isn't you generally don't have contracts you don't often get contracts in editorial work i think a lot of the time because if, if you get a commission on a monday and it needs to go online on thursday there's no time for a contract necessarily they might give you their kind of standard terms but there isn't always a contract to go back and forth. There's not always the time for it. But there's a lot of work where you're daft to not have a contract. If it, anything in advertising, anything where you're handing over artwork that they could use for other things, then you've got to get a contract. I didn't have questions in the survey in the past two years about diversity, and this year I felt like I really had to put them in. Um, and it's kind of highlighted some issues and it, the industry we need to be more inclusive and there are things, issues out there. Um, I live in a bit of a bubble on Twitter and I kind of think, no, because, you know, there's a lot of diversity here, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the people who are getting all the work or the right things are being published or the right people are getting opportunities. And it goes right back to school. We need, I mean, as a country, maybe as a planet, I'm not sure, uh, we need more diversity in schools uh, as teachers because people need to see you know, you need to see yourself somewhere to kind of give something to as you grow up. We need more diversity in teaching in colleges and in university so that people can, everyone can feel like there, there is a route for them, there is a path and, and you know, 
but you know they won't face issues they want to feel confident and we want people to feel that you know they they're not the first person making their way sort of thing and and they're going to face lots of challenges we want people to know that they can do this and we need that path to be there for them